Are we on? All right, we're on. Microphone working? You don't know yet, but we will know here in just a second. Hold on here. I want to make sure my mic's working before I go too far. One, two, three. Dawn? All right, everybody hears me. Hello, everyone. It's Michelle. Nicole. I don't know what else to say. Okay, well, yesterday we started working on this one-piece giant china cabinet that was a roadside rescue and I decided that I was going to turn it into two separate pieces and I'm not going to lie it was a complete and utter pain in the butt. <laughs> I hit my nose today so you know my nose is kind of big anyways I guarantee my nose is going to be like way bigger by the end of the day. I whacked my nose with the screwdriver handle so hard it made my eyes start crying. <laughs> Changing a tire is a pain in the butt. This thing was like four times worse than It's that. a horrible idea, but we did don't, it. Don't try this at home. No, I think you should try this at home. Right, well, don't try this particular if you at home. If you do, just light it on fire. No. <laughs> But you know what the good news is, is that we did it. We did it. We, I went in there and unscrewed all these screws. There was a ton of screws in here. There was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws that you could actually get to from the inside of this cabinet, from like the drawers. And then 27 screws you couldn't see or find. Then, or there, <laughs> then there was four screws on the back going up to connect the top, but then there was one, two, three, four screws that are somewhere within here that I have yet to figure out where they go. It's like they built this thing upside down. I'll tell you what, they built this stuff to last. They did not want it to fall apart and they did want it to last a hundred years. And I'll tell you what, this thing Mission fought us. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. We got it apart though. That's the really good news. So here's the bottom and here's the top. And when the top came off, we noticed that it needed a little bit more, um, Stability stability for the base, especially if we're going to connect these feet. So Dawn took some wood, some old lumber that we had, and built a stronger base for the bottom that we can attach these feet to. Yeah, but I think we need to rework that a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's a little wonky. Yeah. But I was really excited about it. And so we're going to probably work on this at a later date and bring this all together. And right now we're just gonna work on just the bottom that you can use as a buffet, you can use it as a sofa table, or for me, I'm gonna be using it as my um, studio backdrop, my little workbench area, but it's not gonna get real dirty. So I'm just gonna take a second and move this out of the way. Oh, open myself up a little room here. I'm trying not to. Ding, okay, let me move this. Alright, so now we have the joy of getting this thing prepped for spit and I'm very, 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 very excited about spitting it. I've come to a couple of different ideas that I thought would be pretty cool for spitting it, um, but you know, I, I, I had this crazy dream last night about it being like rainbow, but then I also have, and that kind of sucks. And I was like, oh, that's not what I wanted it to turn out like. And then I had a dream about um, it being carved out of a mineral. And I thought that was really neat. So I'm still looking forward to seeing you guys' input on how you think I should tackle this and decorate it and what kind of techniques we should use because I totally need some advice on this. After pulling this thing apart, I really just am almost over it. Can they see my nose? I think I busted my nose. I'm not even lying. It's horrible feeling. It hurts. And my eye. I hurt my eye too. It hit me in my eye. I'm gonna have a black eye and a busted nose. I didn't do it. I wanna go say this on record before <laughs> I give you another one. <laughs> right. Dawn didn't do it. It was not Dawn. Dawn didn't do it. 
All right, guys. Well, let's make sure you remember that. I will remember it, babe. I will remember it. All right, well, let's get started. One of the first things that I like to do when working with a really old piece like like this one, you know that it's greater than 20, 30, 40 years old. I would imagine that this was probably from the 19... 60s maybe at the very earliest because it is old it is dovetailed and it's got the really really old flat screws so what I like to do with old finishes like this I like to test them first um, I like to do anything that's non-toxic that you can do indoors without hurting yourself and that's what we're gonna be trying first um, with my first attempt to um, prepping this piece and I'm gonna go over just the very basic things that a lot of people just might not know what to do. Um, the first thing you wanna do is go in and you're gonna to want to take off all of your hardware. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you keep your screws separate. Honey, well, I'm, you wanna help me unscrew this so we can go super fast? No, I'm good. You're such a jerk face. You have a lot of screws to work on. All right, so here we right go. Now. So there's two. So they come off easy. These are pressure ones. These are very typical. Um, I see them on the hardware exchange a lot, which is ran by Dan Elman. If you guys are ever in the needs of looking for a missing piece of hardware that doesn't match, um, you're always able to look right on Facebook. There's a Facebook group called the Hardware Exchange. And that's where you can find a lot of old, antique, and vintage, and even some modern um, Here, so hardware. Let me those other two drawers in the... Uh... All right. Oh, I'll give you this one. Right. And I'll give you this screwdriver. Here, look at Can you believe yesterday we had this little short stubby? Thank you for telling me what it's called. This whole time, and I didn't even realize it. We went and looked through everything for them. So let's get this prepared. So the first thing to do is make sure you keep your hardware and your screws together. You don't want to um, lose them because it is a real belly ache whenever you're working with these vintage pieces and then you lose one or one's missing. Um, it always drives me bananas. But don't feel that you're, you mandatorily have to use um, the same hardware that was on it. And you can also feel free to like paint it any color that you want. So the first thing that I like to do is clean them. And one thing that I really like to clean mine in is, um, what just happened to my screwdriver? Is CLR. So let me go grab that, it's calcium lime and rust. It gets them nice and clean. Um, I think that there's some other products on the market out there. Ooh, look at this one's like stripped. Someone must have tried to, tried to um, do something to this one. Ooh. Ooh, it's like rusted on. Here, Don, take this one off for me, too, so they don't see me fighting with it. Okay, I'll take your little rubber. Ah! All right. So that's always your first step is to get the hardware off and get it to soaking and getting clean. Does anybody have any other products that they like to clean their hardware in? Do you see anybody? Uh, no. Nope. <laughs> Anybody joined in yet? Yeah, we got some people watching. Oh, good. Hello from Oklahoma. Leslie. Hello. Michelle Ruffner's on. Hello. Hello. Uh, Crystal, by the way, says put some frankincense oil on your nose. Frankincense oil? I need to do something because I've got my big show coming up. In what, in two weeks, baby? Or one week? And I don't want a big fat nose for it. I totally am going to have a big fat nose. And I'm super upset about it. Super upset. I'm going to die. All right, so I'm going to get my hardware, put it all in one little thing here. I think I saw a piece fall back here. Here it is. Yep. All right. 
And then you have some over here too. Go ahead and get that lined up. All right, we're gonna get this prepped for cleaning. So get all these, put them in here. Find up. Are they able to see down here at the lower half, babe? They are now. All right. So, let's see. I've been fighting this camera. It doesn't like to be where it is. Oh, man, I can't open this. All right, well, I'll put these to soak a little later. I'm not going to fight with that while everybody's waiting on me. All right, the first thing I like to do, as I said, is see what i can use to stitch it well you know she last i have done the stitch done them before and taken them off but i find that putting them back on is so hard it and is this super isn't, hard well, this isn't for sale no if i now i do suggest that if you are looking to resell always take all your hardware off make it match your um do it the right way yeah i do whenever it's for sale but, and some people like to go right over their pieces. So, oh God, now you got me. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Jerks. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in here and I'll just drum them out real fast. So let's get all our pieces out. All right, where's my little flathead screwdriver? It's always this itty bitty guy. So. Here we go. This is going to take a while, so everybody. Well, why don't we just do this later? Why don't you go ahead and show the people? Well, because you got to show the people how to do it right. Well, and they don't need to sit here and watch you take out 200 screws. Well, why don't you help me so that I'm only taking out? There's because only nine screws. Because I can't get the ghost to run the board? Listen, you can get that ghost to do anything you want. Don says that this piece is haunted. He always thinks every piece is haunted. But this piece really has beat us up. We've had quite a few obstacles with this piece. Um, as you guys saw yesterday, I just don't think the thing wanted to come apart. I think it wanted to stay together and not be unmarried, you know? I can't blame it. Oh, man. You know, we should get a camera down here. To show the screwing. If we're Pretty sure everybody screw. knows how screws work. That's true. Which is, why don't you just take this one off and then you can do the other one when we're not on camera. That's true. Because I'd be bored right now. Well, I'm sorry. <sighs> hey, hey, listen. You want the job done right. A lot of people go right over it. But I'm looking for a nice, clean look. Well, now you're showing how to do both ways. You know, I don't want to do both ways. I'm going to do it one time and do it right. Okay, so we only have a few more. I should have used my drill. Where's my drill? Wrong way. I'm telling you, honey, I need to get one of those. Thank you, Amy. I those try. rubber, those, uh, that little one, that little. handheld screwdriver thing. Oh, this is too thick to fit in the hole. You were doing pretty good with the manual one. I thought so, too. It just would have been a lot faster. All right, so you know those battery-operated screwdrivers? I've been really belly aching that I want one. And Don tells me that they're useless. I think they are. So if anybody is watching and actually uses one, Please tell me because I want one so bad and I want one that works so that I don't have to lug around that big heavy drill. It works great. Trust me, we couldn't have done anything that we've done so far without that sucker. But I think Leslie that... Leslie says she's not bored. She's just looking around to see how neat your craft room is. I know. It's and... Don. Don keeps it clean for me. He's a neat freak. Not really, but... All right. Well, I, I, I cleaned it up. I try to keep it clean for the show. Yeah, you do. I try to. I usually clean it up. But, but I, whenever I start working, it becomes a 
tornado. A tornado mess because it's it's a lot involved. Oh my gosh, Don. The reason why I need to do both of these is because I need a strip. I didn't even bring any dollars. Well, you don't need any dollars. How about you just bring your putt over here and take that other one off while I start stripping? Well, that's okay. Hmm. Don't worry about it. I don't need you. All right. Now we got all these off. Oh, my gosh. It kind of slices your fingers up a little bit. Those screws were really sharp. Not all screwdrivers are quick created either, equal either. This one's like really, really thick. All of these are really thick, but the little screw heads that are in here are really, really thin and narrow. So let's get this one off. Garage Mama suggests you should get a Works W O R X. What is it? It's a screwdriver. It's the electric screwdriver. Yeah, I believe so. I'm telling you. I think I know who Garage Mama is. Uh oh, honey, this look it. Look it. Wonky screwer again. Wonky screwer guy strikes again. The guy built this thing must have been like cross-eyed. He something. must have been drunk. Oh. Yeah. He super sucks. He's got this screw in here crooked. So you can't unscrew it. I'm going to have to leave that one to you, babe. All right. Just get that Fine. one out. You'll have to come and get that one for me because I just can't do it. I'll get these other ones. But that one's like jammed in there. So I think whoever made this was totally drunk. I'm not going to lie. See it? See how they put it in there crooked? They jacked it up. Oh. There goes another hole in my head. Oh, no. Try that one. You can't drill them out. We tried that, too. Up, st up top. Oh, my gosh. That was a nightmare, you guys. I don't think... I think this will be my last china hutch I ever break into two pieces. For the rest of my life. That second one comes out. I can get it out easy. Well, the problem... Big bearded tattooed man with his little pink flower screwed up. It looks beautiful. I'm telling you, that guy was drunk. That and was, he had a muscle. That was staying in there. You think so? Here, you hold it there. Ready? Somebody told us yesterday to put a rubber band on it. Unfortunately, I don't have any stinking rubber bands. So try to make the hole a little deeper on that. No, that guy, see, he stripped them all out. All right, well, let's get this on. What do we do? Move on. We move on? Move on. All right, we're moving on. So we'll get that off later for you guys. All right, stripping, prepping. The first thing that you do in my opinion, is to judge what kind of finish you have. If you have this finish that you're looking at it and it has like this peely look, and you can you can you get in there real good? Which one has some pretty good? That'll work. Oh, yeah, but there's no light. There's no light. Well, it's, it is what it is, man. Okay. We're in a we're in a makeshift studio at the moment. We're in between. Yeah. All right. So. All right, so if you look at this piece of wood, doo -doo, okay, so you'll Bring notice down here. Bring it back up. I can zoom in, Ben. Yeah, but I don't think you can zoom in this good. That'd be crazy. All right, so if you look right here, there's like this area that looks like it's like almost like skin. It's all crackly looking, and that's old waxes. 
and old like boiled linseed oil. The old stuff they used to use. If you can take your fingernail and scrape across it and it turns this yellowish color, you know that you're working with a very old type of sealer. And 90% of the time you can get away with using dish soap, dish detergent, dishwasher gel. This is dollar store crystal power x crystal gel automatic dishwasher detergent lemon scent that's the one i like to use and all i do because it's cheap doesn't cost anything you just apply it to your surfaces and get yourself a nice little dish of it Squirt it out on there. Use your paintbrush, just a regular old chip brush, and start sliding it around on your surface. So nice and thick. And this actually has lye in it. And it eats a lot of that surface. And this is also a great alternative for stripping or prepping your wood or any surface really, even if you don't want to get to the pure wood part, who cares? Just use it anyways. This will get your, your surface nice and prepped. It'll take off any type of residue, anything like that. You just want to make sure that you put it on nice and thick and you keep a bottle of water handy to keep it um, from drying out. You want to keep it nice and damp. You want to keep it liquid. So as soon as, if you're in a drier area, you're going to want to make sure that you keep a bottle of Why don't you push that out and stand bottle. behind it if you can? Well, I got to work around the front now. Well, so. I should be quiet. All right. So we're going to, and that's nice whenever you're working around all these weird details that are always just so hard to get into. So if you put this on nice and Sandy Claire says that she uh, she took her cabinet, a china cabinet apart to redo it, ended up using the bottom to store the cra her crafts and set the rest out to the curb. It was a real pain in the butt. You know, th the tops of these china cabinets, I really want one for my laundry room. Um, it's oh, not even a, a laundry idea. room. It's a laundry closet. Mm -hmm. And it's got these ugly cabinets above it that are, like, pretty much useless. And I've been wanting to put get a nice big one that I can just mount to the wall and make it look all pretty. Are they able to get down here, babe, and see this? Or am I just like super in the way? Cause I'd like, right. oh good. I can't get that camera to look like anything. It looks like crap. Sorry Does it? guys. It's not in good focus. It's the camera. I think something may have happened whenever we tore the real studio out. Oh, no. The camera may be busted. Well, what can you do? All right, so here we go. I'm getting it on there. All these little crevices, it goes on nice and thick. Um, it, remember, if you're doing this on in your garage, you can clean your floor right up with it. It'll actually just clean your garage floor because it is soap. Um, just want to put it on nice and thick and you want to get all the way around and get it nice even thickness everywhere. I'm not going to worry too much about the interior on stripping it. Um, if it is going to end up getting stripped and let me turn this this way because what I'd like to do is show you guys, um, what happens and how you know that it's working. Um, let me pull this. Here we go. Now, this will dry your hands out terribly. So, if you um, are sensitive to um, soaps and things like that, um, I do suggest you wear some rubber gloves. I didn't because, honestly, I just forgot. But I know that it's going to dry my hands. It does have a drying agent in it, and that's what makes your dishes come out nice and shiny. It's because it, it goes fast. Are you going to move? Can you give me some rubber gloves? Oh, I love you. Thank you. Uh -oh. Well, I only want the rubber gloves because I'm trying to grow my nails out for the show. <laughs> I'm not always.
always girly, but sometimes I am. At least once a year when it comes time for the big show. I try to act fancy pants. All right, so we're getting this on. And then, got that on there. So I want you guys to see something here. I'm going to turn it to the other side. Got this on pretty thick. I just want to make sure that I've got a nice layer of it. And turn it the other way and get this other side. I really suggest investing into one of these furniture um, things that move your furniture around for you easy because then you don't have to constantly get up and down off the floor when working on a piece like this. And yes, Dawn did suggest me putting it up on risers, but then it was just too high. It was too high for me. Well, if I realized, would have realized how bad this camera is, I would have made you... Really? Is it that bad? Yeah, it just looks bad. Well, why don't you just move it forward rather than trying to zoom in? Well, I can unzoom it. Hold on. Yeah. I mean, I'm all about. Hey, look at there's some unicorn spit stuck to it there. Here's how old that was, man. So it's starting to get this really weird look on the other areas here. I'm gonna show you here in a second. All right, and I noticed that I'm already starting to get um, some brown off. Are you, is this camera working? Technically. How about I just pull it forward and you unzoom? I already unzoomed. Okay, so if you look at the plate, you can see that it was real clear, but as I'm working and getting this on there, I'm picking up what's left over on the actual piece and it's starting to get this tobacco color. See that? No. You can't? Mm -mm. It just is what it is, babe. Keep moving. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I, the, the camera just is busted. It's okay. What can you do? All right. So I'm going to move this again. Move it over. And you can see that it's starting to get like this white discoloration, and that's it starting to pull off the existing um, wax, pledge, different things like that that are stuck to the outside of it. That's what will be turning white, at least in theory. That's my theory of what is the first thing that comes up is um, furniture polishes. So let's work on these drawers real quick and get the... On there too. Oh my gosh, you can totally see this one has like all types of streaking on it happening. There we go. Sheila wants to know, how do you clean it all off? I have a bucket of water and a washcloth. And this is my shop floor. If you are doing this in your house, just put a large plastic drop cloth down and just know that you're probably going to make a mess. I would definitely suggest doing this outside just to avoid the mess. But, you know, doing it in the garage would be all right. Just know that it does make, it's pretty messy. My floor here at the shop, I'm going to have to replace my carpet anyways when I moved in. So my landlord was like, I don't care what you do. So, and it was kind of crappy carpet. It's just glued straight to the, to the floor or to the concrete. So there's nothing fancy going on here. So it's not like you ever get to keep your deposit anyways on that stuff. <laughs> so. Hey, honey, do we need to, let's see what we've got going what? here. All right, we're going to let that sit for a minute. I, I let the, I just set all the camera functions to auto. 
So if it, it's going to jump in and out, but it'll theoretically keep a decent picture. Do you want to aim that one down so it sees more of the project and less of the ceiling? This is your main camera, man. I know. All right, so this is all starting to bubble, but no one can see what's going on, and that's what I'm not liking about your camera angles. No one well, can see what's I happening here. apologize. Can I move this one and just aim it straight down? It'll fall off. No. Go ahead. Do whatever you want to do. Okay. It's going to fall on the floor. It won't fall on the floor. I got a great idea. I'll move it over. Well, give me a minute. I just want people to be able to see what's going on here. Rather than guessing. How's that? How's that? Can they see downward angle now? Let me see. And I don't want to do all this in vain. This is a really hard project for me just to sit around and do nothing. All right. I wish I could bring it in. The, the other camera. We have other cameras right in the middle of the show. I would rather stop recording. That's what I'm saying is because I don't want, I need to be able to make a video out of this. And yeah. not being able to get this stuff. That's fine. Is it you got time? this. Okay. You got it. All right. All right. I'll take your word for it. All yeah. right, so I can see that it's, oh, gross, it's starting. Okay. I can see all this stuff starting to leach up on it. I'm just going to apply some more here and there where I noticed that it dried out some. Oh, gross. There's, like, dead skin coming off of this. There's all kinds of stuff coming off of this thing. And whoever had it, I think, was definitely a smoker. So. Pretty sure everybody of that smoked era was in the a house. smoker. Yeah, back then, I think that was pretty much not frowned upon the way that it is today. And I think it's because they didn't know the effects of smoking. All right, so we got this on. I'm going to move these out of the way. You move the whole thing that way. The whole thing and this. Warp. One more try. How's that? Nice? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to go over this one more time here. All right. All right, so we come in to, I'm going to show the top of this. So I'm going to bring the camera over here nice and tight. So I can zoom with the other camera. Right into it. Oh, that's right for that. Okay, all you have to do is tilt that up. That thing. Tilt what up? That piece you're working with. You don't need, hey. I'm trying to aim it to the thing. You're standing in a big pile of that crap. Now I'm going to rub it in. Okay, so now you're going to get your... Hey. What? Just tilt that board up, baby. I will tilt the board up. I'm grabbing a piece of... Stop. Okay, so when you're... Are we on this camera? No. Well, what do you want me to do? I'm... Okay, so... When you're doing this, you can look at it and go like this, and sometimes it'll be thick enough to get all the way down to the bare wood. This one is not going to take it down, so I'm glad that I know that now. But it is going to allow me to get into these little crevices, and be able to go around all these little areas. and get all that nasty out. And I think that's pretty important right there. This has been stained, and this is a very hard wood. But you can see that this is coming off a very brown color compared to what it was before. 
So as you can see, again, we're just scraping it off, getting all the big pieces. The other thing I like to use a lot when I know that, the, that it's not going to completely strip is just using a scrubber like this. And that'll get you a nice scrub. I don't think this one's gonna come down to the bare wood very easy at all, unless we sanded it. And we could sand it. I guess we could take off these little details and make sanding very easy. I think everybody should just kind of decide what they wanna do with that. Because I don't know, should we take these off and be able to sand it and get down to the bare wood? Or do you guys wanna see how to go over existing finishes? Because either way, with existing finishes, you're going to want to, whether it's bare wood or not, there's prep, and there's prep involved in all paints. Anybody who says that there's no prep required, well, you've got to make sure that it's clean, grease-free for any type of paint to stick. Um, that's just science. But you can see here how much of that pledge was built up, and whether you've got oil-based or water-based, product that you're putting onto a piece, it's not going to bond to that. And it'll paint it, sure, but give it a couple of weeks or a couple of months and it's going to peel. It'll peel up, it'll crackle, it'll chip real easy, it won't be durable. So we got to get all that off of there. Oh man, this thing is super duper stained. They must have, I don't know what they must have used to stain this sucker, but they sure got their mahogany color, that's for sure. All right, I'm going to let that other stay on there. And I'm going to take this minute to get my bucket of water. Oh. And I'm going to take and clean this one off real well. Where's my towel? Put the towel down. Get my washcloths. Is that the front door opening, babe? And then we're just going to just wipe that off and clean it extremely well. You're going to go over your entire piece and do that. Um, if you wanted to go to bare wood after this point, you're always welcome to sand. But if you're like me and you're like, you know, I'm just going to go over the existing finish, you can do that too. So what I'll do is I'm going to wash all this off of the mahogany. That'll give me a nice clean surface that if I do choose to sand, um, it won't gum up my sandpaper. It'll make it go a lot longer. Plus, it'll work on getting all the stinky cigar and cigarette smell off of it. So that'll be nice. And of course, it's cold right now, so it's nice and dry out. So this won't take very long to dry off. And then what we'll do when I come back, because I'm sure you guys don't want to watch me do this whole thing, what I'd like is for everyone to give me some comments about whether you think I should take this all the way down to the bare wood or not. That would be a good thing to know. And what kind of color ideas that you guys have for me that you would like me to try on here and give me some inspiration. I would really like that. And then we'll tune in here in a little while after I get everything stripped and then we'll go over what you guys commented and you want me to do to it. Does that sound good, Don? Don's got his thumb up. <laughs> All right, guys, well, we'll tune in here in just a little while. Um, give me a good, what, 45 minutes? And I'll have this all cleaned up and we'll be back for episode number three. Bye.